there's no science that doesn't understand the idea of an anthropogenic warming because humans are putting gases into the atmosphere. So it's not a belief system. You, you can choose not to believe physics. You kind of a, a data hub and data insights for everything is to do with weather. And one of the, I would say the most <laughs> heated, debated topics in our uh, society is this topic of uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. And given that you have this much data and, and also <laughs> 20 years of history, I think the question that comes is, for some people, climate change is a dogma. For other people, it's a debatable topic. Here is my question. Is it real? Why is it real? And <laughs> to what extent it is real? Like as a scientist, if you had to talk to another scientist, how do you convince a scientist that this is man-made and not a long-term variation of uh, you know, well, the system? You know, it's funny that you should say that. So I've given talks publicly before. And one of the things that I've tried to distill down the real message about what we're doing to our atmosphere and why climate change is so real, it's irrefutable, it's physics. Um, if you go to bed tonight and before you climb under your covers, you add two blankets to your bed, what, what will happen? Y you'll get too warm, right? And, and you get too warm, not because you are warmer. You didn't produce more heat. You laying under the covers did not get outputting more heat, but the heat that you outputted uh, was insulated, was trapped closer to you. More heat was trapped. And so, I mean, basically that's all that's happening. Greenhouse gases, which we emit when we burn hydrocarbons, CO2 goes into the atmosphere and it traps long wave radiation more efficiently than short wave. And long wave radiation is what the earth emits because bodies emit radiation according to their temperature. The hotter you are, the shorter the radiation, <laughs> the wavelength. So the sun emits very short wave radiation which passes right through the atmosphere and hits the earth. The earth warms up, but the earth isn't very warm. I mean, you know, it's 50 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, 10 or 20, 10 or 15 degrees centigrade. And, and it emits long wave radiation, which is, trapped by the same molecules that allow shortwave to go through it. So there is no debate that adding more blankets to your bed, you will feel warmer. So if you add more insulation to the atmosphere in the form of these gases that trap long wave radiation, you will be warmer. So it's, there isn't really any, <laughs> there's no science that doesn't understand the idea of an anthropogenic warming because humans are putting gases into the atmosphere. So it's not a belief system. You, you can choose not to believe physics. But uh, how do you measure this? Like, uh, for example, in these 20 years, what mm. have you seen? Oh, we've seen tangible, phenomenal tangible changes. Oh, yeah. Evidence. I, can you give us some, 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 sure. some elements from so, all the world? Because you, you see all the weather in all the world every nine kilometers. Mm -hmm. You have this fine grade uh, of the entire globe. So, so there are parts of the world that are getting wetter. We just, we just submitted a report uh, on the country of Chad, which is, um, its northern part is deep into the Sahara. So the Sahel, which is the boundary, uh, some more southern part. The global circulation models, the big computer models that try to talk about climate change, predict a wetter Sahel. <laughs> Chad is so much wetter across the Sahel, it's unbelievable. They have increased, I, I for, I've forgotten the specific number, but we're talking 100,000 square kilometers of land now gets 90 days, that's a kind of a threshold for growing season, 90 days where the rains are more than 600 millimeters. I mean, Denver, Colorado doesn't get 600 millimeters ever. I mean, in a whole year. And, and we're talking in 90 days, they can grow food in places they couldn't do that 10 years ago. Now the opposite is also true. <laughs> We've seen trends now, if you look at the last 15 years and all of this information, by the way, the biggest changes have all happened in the last 10 years. And if you look at parts of Zimbabwe, the rains have come late. They've failed. Kenya's had really issues. The place I did my PhD work in the Eastern drylands, the October rains used to be more reliable and now they're much less reliable than the main, the March rains, they have two rainy seasons. We just finished a report in Guyana on the North coast of South America. And December has become so dry that the rice fields there, they, they need to put water in the rice fields and they have problems with saltwater intrusion because they're right on the coast. But we've seen manifestations of increasing warmer temperatures, for example, at nighttime, which 
isn't by itself one or two degrees. This is really important. May not be something that you, you don't feel a lot warmer or anything. It might be warmer, but what really happens is you change ecological zones and all of a sudden you have the proliferation of foliar diseases that never lived in that environment before. And all of a sudden are proliferating and they really hurt the crops. And the farmers don't know what to do. The chemicals don't exist to take care of it because it's a brand new disease, nobody planned on it. So there's huge problems with what amounts to be a, a degree or two of change. And we're seeing that all over. At the macroscopic level with your data, how <laughs> can you help mitigate or do something about it? Okay, well, adaptation is a little bit different than mitigate. It depends on if you're mitigating the impact of the climate change, yes, knowing more about what's going on. But sometimes the word mitigation is more about the the switch away from hydrocarbons into trying to use solar or wind. So that's, the, the, we aren't as directly as a weather-based observation company. I mean, that's our premium product is high resolution observed data. We're not really in the classic mitigation. We don't, we don't necessarily directly reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but we help adaptation to all of the changes that have been manifest because of that. 